Imagine if Paradise had a postal code, it would undoubtedly lead you straight to St. Peter Barbados. This isn't just a place where the sun perennially winks at the turquoise sea, but where history pirouettes in alleyways, drapes itself over ruins and often enjoys a rum punch by the vibrant shores. What if I told you that this picturesque parish has a past as colourful as its coral reefs? Buckle up as we embark on a whimsical ride through time, exploring the quirks and charms of St. Peter. St. Peter, a northern gem in Barbados, isn't just your typical seaside paradise. Beyond its sun-kissed beaches lies a rich tapestry of history, infused with a dose of humour that could only be genuinely Barbadian. Why is St. Peter unique? For starters, it's not every day. You find a Caribbean locale that offers both pristine beaches and stories of pirates and rum that could fill a bookshelf. The aura of this place is a blend of sun, sea and laughter, the perfect cocktail for history served with an entertaining twist. Here every grain of sand and old stone wall has a story often told with a chuckle. Let's step back in time and see what makes St. Peter not just a place on a map, but a narrative worth exploring. In 1627 the English first set foot on Barbadian soil and oh what a spectacle it must have been. According to tales passed down, the local iguanas were so startled by these pale newcomers that they were seen wearing expressions that suggested they might have preferred an invasion of pirates instead. The English, armed not just with muskets, but with a bewildering lack of seasoning skills, quickly made St. Peter their hub. This initial encounter set the tone for a history filled with both conflict and comedy, as the locals gradually got used to their unseasoned invaders. In these early days, St. Peter began to carve its identity not just on maps, but in the annals of unusual historical footnotes, setting the stage for centuries of stories worth retelling. Long before tourists in Bermuda shorts and sun hats, St. Peter played host to a different sort of visitor pirates, yes, the skull and crossbones kind. The most flamboyant of them all was perhaps Calico Jack, known for his love of vibrant fabrics and, ironically, impeccable manners. Calico Jack and his crew were known to frequent the coves of St. Peter, often leaving behind empty rum bottles and bewildered locals. These pirates contributed to the local lore, their legends weaving through the fabric of community tales like threads of gold in a rich tapestry. Their influence lingers in the names of bays and the occasional treasure hunt story told with a wink and a nudge at local taverns. St. Peter might not thank its pirate visitors for much, but it certainly owes them for some of its most colourful history chapters. If St. Peter had a bloodstream, it would surely run with rum. The parish is steeped in the history of Barbados rum, with old distilleries like the mythical St. Peter's Spirits, which, according to local legend, was founded after a particularly inspiring pirate visit. The tales of rum in St. Peter are not just about the spirit, but about the spirited. There's the story of Old Tom, who allegedly mixed his first cocktail to win a bet against a ghost, and Auntie Clarisse, who used rum to cure everything from sadness to sea urchin stings. Rum isn't just a drink here, it's a way of life and a cause for many a humorous mishap and unexpected party in the history of St. Peter. The architectural landscape of St. Peter is a quirky mix of the functional, the historical, and the downright whimsical. Take the famed Leaning Tower of Spitestown, a colonial-era warehouse that started leaning after a particularly raucous pirate party, or so the local legend claims. Then there's the Pink Pearl, a house painted bright pink by its owner, Captain Samuel Grief, allegedly because it was his wife's favourite colour, or because he lost a bet. The story varies depending on who you ask. These buildings don't just tell the history of St. Peter, they do it with a chuckle, embodying the light-hearted spirit of the parish. To truly understand the heart of St. Peter, one must experience its famous fish fries. These are not just meals, they are social events, wrapped in the aroma of fried fish and the sound of calypso music. Add any fish fry, you'll likely hear about the time Miss Lottie accidentally fried her husband's watch along with the marlin. Fish fries are where history, culture and a bit of gossip come together, simmered over an open flame. They're the pulse of the parish, where every bite tells a story and every laugh shares a slice of St. Peter's rich, quirky heritage. In 1816, St. Peter was not just a backdrop, but a battleground in the largest slave rebellion in Barbadian history. Led by the charismatic and cunning Busa, the rebellion is a testament to the courage and wit of the enslaved people. 
Humorous tales weave through the narrative, like the story of old Joe, who convinced his master he had magical powers, thus securing a day off during the rebellion. These stories not only highlight the resilience, but also the indomitable spirit of humor that persisted even in the darkest times. The 1816 rebellion, while a poignant chapter, also contributes to the rich tapestry of St. Peter's history, reminding us that courage often comes with a dash of cunning and occasionally a chuckle. Chattel houses, small movable wooden homes dot the landscape of St. Peter like pieces on a chessboard, each with its own story. These houses were designed to be easily relocated, a feature that has led to numerous humorous anecdotes, such as the time Mr. Simmons woke up to find his house had been moved to the other side of the village as a prank. These homes are not just shelters, but symbols of adaptability and ingenuity, traits that are quintessentially Bajan. The stories of chattel houses in St. Peter are filled with humor, community spirit, and a touch of the unexpected, much like the parish itself. The sugarcane fields of St. Peter are not just landscapes of lush green, but are also historical storytellers. The cane-cutting chronicles include tales of ingenious methods to shoo away mischievous monkeys and the legendary cane-cutting competitions, where the prize was often a hearty laugh more than the day's earnings. These stories from the cane fields reflect the hard work, creativity and humour that have always been part of the parish's heritage, making even the toughest days a bit sweeter with a story or two. St. Peter has always been home to characters who could fill books with their exploits. From Madame Josephine, who was known for predicting the weather with uncanny accuracy, to Sir Harold, who insisted his horse was a descendant of royal steeds and treated it better than royalty. These individuals not only made their mark on the parish, but also added layers of humor and humanity to the historical narrative of St. Peter, ensuring that the history of this place is as much about its people as it is about events. The spiritual landscape of St. Peter is dotted with churches, each holding stories that are as uplifting as they are amusing. Like the tale of Father O'Reilly, who was so beloved that when he mistakenly announced a service at midnight instead of noon, the whole congregation turned up, pajamas and all. These stories of faith and folly are integral to understanding how spirituality in St. Peter is not just about reverence, but about community, warmth and, yes, a healthy dose of humor. St. Peter is blessed with natural wonders that are as quirky as they are beautiful. The Whistling Frog Grotto, for instance, is renowned not just for its stunning stalactites, but for the chorus of frogs that seem to have a repertoire of local tunes. These natural attractions are not just sites of beauty, but of community gatherings, local lore, and the occasional hilarious misadventure, making them essential chapters in the story of St. Peter. In St. Peter, festivals are not just celebrations, but vital parts of the parish's heart and soul. Take the Flying Fish Festival, where the highlight is a competition for the best dressed flying fish, an event that is as hilarious as it sounds. These festivals are times of joy, creativity and community, showcasing the parish's identity and its penchant for finding humour and happiness in every occasion. Today, St. Peter continues to thrive, blending its rich history with modern quirks. New stories are being made every day, like the recent initiative to teach parrots in the public gardens to sing calypso tunes, an endeavor that encapsulates the enduring spirit of St. Peter. As we look to the future, it's clear that while the world changes, the essence of St. Peter, with its blend of history, humor, and community, remains a constant inviting everyone to write their chapter in this enchanting parish's ongoing story. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more interesting videos.